Welcome to Words of Maranatha, where we delve into the scriptures. Many ponder the roots of those with Japanese or indigenous heritage. Curious if the Bible speaks of these communities or if any biblical figures are linked to the Japanese, Chinese, or indigenous cultures. Contrary to some beliefs that the Bible doesn't reference China or its forebears, it indeed touches on several characters in this regard. In today's video, we'll examine Sin, Rashin, identified in the Bible as the Chinese ancestor, and delve into his backstory in our ongoing series, Biblical Origins of Nations. The scriptures refer to a person named Tarma from Japheth's descendants. Ezekiel's book recognizes Tarma as an ancestor to Far Eastern populations, detailing Tarma's household and its warriors. Additionally, another Asian ancestry traces back to a distinct biblical figure regarded as a progenitor of the Chinese, with ties to Canaan. Notably, unlike other Canaanites, he and his kin weren't marked as foes by Joshua and Moses. Known as Sin or Shin, his name bears striking resemblance to several terms, including China. In Hebrew, Shimi could denote summit, silt, or potentially link to lunar symbolism. Sin, Canaan's offspring, belongs to Ham's family tree, making him Noah's grandson and one of Canaan's 11 children. Sin's lineage, referred to as Tians in Portuguese and Sinites in English, garners indirect biblical mention. The naming variations can cause mix-ups. It's posited that the Sions, Sin's followers, or the Chinese, originated from Zim near Phoenician shores. Intriguingly, the Sions weren't among the Canaanite factions that Joshua was divinely instructed to annihilate, potentially indicating their association with the Shin prefix, tied to early Chinese migrations to the east in regions known as Sinar, or Mason, Sin's territory. The notion that Canaan's curse didn't extend to all his offspring, particularly one son who might be the forebear of the ancient Chinese, stems from the belief that the Sinites, or Sans, didn't settle in Canaanite territory, aligning with ancient Jewish traditions outlined in the Book of Jubilees. The connection between Sin, the Sions, and their potential Chinese descendants is fascinating, especially considering the mention of the Sinites in Isaiah 49.12, stating, See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, some from the region of Aswan. Interpretations from John Wesley and John Gill suggest that Sinim could refer to nomadic tribes or a city named Sin in Egypt, implying an Egyptian connection. However, Manasseh ben Israel, referenced by Gill, offers another view. The Sinites are the Chinese, a theory supported by Claudius Ptolemy's geography, which labels China as Sin. Sin appears in various historical and biblical narratives, the Chronicles of Jeremiel recognize Sin as Canaan's son, and it's linked with a wilderness between Elam and Sin, as documented in Exodus 16, 1 and Numbers 33, 11, 12. In ancient Mesopotamian belief, Sin was the moon god, parent to the sun god Shemesh, and sometimes Ishtar, the Venus deity comprising an astral trio. Linguistically, Sin, or its derivatives, often tie back to ancient China. Xi'an is Shanxi's capital, and Xinjiang is a Chinese autonomous region. Other examples include Shanghai, Shangxi, Shandong, Shenyang, and Chenin, all significant Chinese locations, hinting at a Chinese connection to the Sians or Sinites. Beyond being an ancestor to various Asian ethnicities, Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, Filipinos, Indonesians, and more, Sin's lineage is thought to have merged with Tarma's descendants, creating diverse ethnic groups. This blend includes America's indigenous peoples, who migrated from Asia and other Asians, all seen as Sin's descendants, possibly mingling with Tarma's line. The complexion differences could indicate descent. Lighter skin from Tarma and brown hues from Sin, Canaan's son. This theory could account for the skin tone variations between Native Americans and certain Asian groups. Scientific studies affirm some Native Americans' Asian roots, a product of ancient cultural intermingling that spawned new languages and dialects, like Far Asian and Proto-Caribbean tongues. Some linguistic parallels have been drawn between Japanese and certain Native American languages, with specialists noting similar intonations and speech patterns, underscoring potential auditory resemblances between these languages in North America. 
the intricate ties between the Chinese and their potential ancestral lines through Sin and Tarma, are subjects of extensive debate, often rooted in historical and mythological texts. Their homeland, frequently referred to as Sinim, correlates with these ancestral figures, with Sin and Tarma, seen as the patriarchs of the ancient Mongolic Chinese lineage. Ancient artifacts, like Egyptian carvings, portray these people with distinct traits, such as pronounced noses, full lips, broad cheeks, and smooth or beardless faces. The spectrum of skin colors, from brown to lighter tones, even reddish hues, mirrors certain indigenous populations. Descriptions often highlight black, straight hair, and dark or deep brown eyes, with some accounts noting a slight eye slant. The term tarma, signifying pulled or broken, might allude to their eye shape. The word kitty in Hittite script, translating to Kai, denoted a formidable Far Eastern nation, historically known as Kai, a reference enduring through ages as Kati. These historical and linguistic links captivate scholars and linguists, with the Kati recognized as part of the primordial Chinese ethnic group. The parallels between the Chinese and Kati manifest in various cultural expressions, including attire, footwear styles, and hair braiding techniques. They're often depicted with substantial cheeks, and cranial studies reveal shared characteristics with other Mongolic groups. Sin's persona holds considerable significance in the Far East, linked with the potential genesis of Chinese civilization. The Chinese frequently cite their capital, Shani, meaning Father Sin, as their civilization's probable cradle. Additionally, Shang Fu, documented in Assyrian annals as the Ban, is contemporarily interpreted as China's western capital location. Chinese tradition speaks of Fuxi, or Fohi, a Noah-like figure emerging in Qin's mountains encircled by a rainbow, reminiscent of the biblical post-deluge narrative. Fuxi, too, made animal offerings to the divine. This lore, echoing the Genesis account, speaks to the Chinese origins. Sin, belonging to Noah's third successive generation, might offer a chronological framework for the down of Chinese cultural identity. This Sin association extends to historical naming conventions, with Far Eastern traders known as Sin Sin among the Tians. Greek astronomer Ptolemy labeled China as Sinor land, and Isaiah 49.12's Sinim suggests a distant origin, separate from northern or western regions. Arab records use Sin, Chin, Mahachin, and Machin for China, associating Sin with inhabitants of Asia's far reaches. Sin's connection to the origins of Chinese civilization is not merely a historical curiosity, but a convergence point where ancient history, oral traditions, and the biblical narrative intersect. This association extends beyond China's borders, influencing the culture and history of various Asian regions. Sin's influence can be seen in the spread of cultural practices, writing systems, and social structures that have notable parallels with biblical descriptions and Semitic traditions. For example, the reverence for ancestors, a central practice in Chinese culture, echoes the biblical respect for lineage and heritage. Additionally, the Chinese emphasis on wisdom, virtue, and harmonious social order reflects principles found in many biblical texts. In the field of linguistics, some scholars propose that there are remarkable similarities between ancient Chinese dialects and Semitic languages. Although controversial, this theory suggests a possible exchange of linguistic knowledge in ancient times, perhaps through trade routes or migration. Furthermore, Chinese art and architecture show influences that can be interpreted as echoes of their ancestral heritage. The intricate patterns and symbols used in ceramics and textiles, as well as the construction of monuments and temples, parallel descriptions of artifacts and buildings in regions known for the presence of Sin's descendants. In the modern context, understanding the possible connection between Sin and Chinese civilization offers a new perspective on the rich spectrum of human history. Recognizing these ancestral roots is not just a matter of cultural identity, but also a way to understand how societies separated by vast geographical distances and linguistic barriers can share a common history. Sin's figure in the origin of Chinese civilization is a fascinating discussion point 
that challenges the conventional understanding of isolated history. It suggests that, since ancient times, there has been an interconnectedness between cultures and societies, shaping the course of human history in ways we are just beginning to understand. This acknowledgement of common roots encourages a more unified view of humanity, highlighting cultural interdependence rather than irreconcilable differences. Yet your insights on the Chinese people's captivating genesis are most welcome. The wealth of data surrounding Chinese ancestral ties, often linked to ancient Sans and Sinites tracing back to Canaan and Tarma, is astounding. I've contemplated producing another video exploring Chinese Canaanite connections and their European interactions. I invite your recommendations on other ethnicities with potential biblical roots worth discussing. Thank you for your continued support, and please remember to like and share with those curious about biblical lineages. God bless, and we'll connect soon.